Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. My name is Lynn Lord. if you're new here. And if you see the setup, then you already know what it is. It's another episode of Good Girl Gone For Us. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about side hustles that you can start today, right now, that takes little to no money to start and you can get money from very, very quickly. I asked you guys in the first episode of Good Girl Got Boss what videos you guys wanted to see, and a lot of you guys said that you wanted to see a side hustle video, and trust me, I am a side hustle fanatic. I love a good side hustle, sis, so trust me. A little background on me if you are new to my channel, or if you just didn't know, my name is Lena Lord. A lot of people ask me like, what I do for a living, and I think it might be because y'all are just nosy. I'm just kidding, girl, I'm just kidding. I think that mainly people want to know like what I do for a living, maybe because they see that I make like certain financial moves. Like I bought the house when I was 25 years old. I go on vacations a lot. I just moved into a luxury sky rise condo. I'm very confident to say that I have a pretty good relationship with money. This is not me boasting, trust me. I feel like if the wrong person comes across these type of like finance videos or something, they might think like, oh my God, people who make these kind of videos are like so ostentatious or just not humble or something like that that's not the case i'm not saying this to brag trust me i'm only 26 and i have a lot of growth to go and a lot of financial milestones to hit i'm still learning i'm still growing we we here together we want to get this bag secure this bag together i am confident when i say i have a very good healthy relationship with money my educational background is in accounting and finance so i have a bachelor's degree of business administration with the area of emphasis in finance i also have a three-year advanced diploma in accounting so my nine to five career has always been in accounting and finance so when people ask me what i do for a living i typically just go to the norm like i do accounting i work in finance whatever that's just only been my nine to five and believe me when I first started I wasn't making enough money to comfortably live the lifestyle that you know the lifestyle I see for myself girl I see myself living lavish honey living in opulence baby I would say that a nine to five job was not enough to hold me down but it has been a blessing always something for me to fall back on if the going gets tough with other things but it is basically 2020 and you owe it to yourself to have multiple streams of revenue multiple side hustles okay you owe it to yourself to create the life that you desire in this economy it's damn near impossible to live comfortably with just your nine to five career. And even if you are living comfortably with just one job, why not add to it and why not have more? <laughs> What's the problem? What's wrong with that? So I'm gonna tell you guys a bunch of side hustles that I have done in the past and side hustles I've heard about and you can also get into as well. So the list is longer. Pay attention to this. As long as you have a skill, you will never be broke. As long as you know how to do something, anything, anything in this world, there is someone out there who's willing to pay for what you know how to do. Either they don't know how to do it or they don't want to do it. I.e., you know how to clean and organize very well. There is someone out there who just hates organizing, but to you, it might be very therapeutic. It might bring you joy. That's one skill that you have to organize. You can monetize that skill. And we're gonna get all into how to do that and everything for each example. Before we go any further, if you are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that red button over there. Be sure to watch the other episodes of Good Girl Gone Boss. I'll try to put these all in a playlist so that they're readily available for you guys. The first side hustle that I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna mention because I already put it out there and it's one of mine, is to create a YouTube channel. If you already have one or if you haven't already created a YouTube channel, it's not too late to use YouTube as a platform to make money. There are so many different avenues to make money on YouTube, so many different ways to monetize your channel and monetize your platform it is crucial how do you make money on youtube that's crazy you do youtube you make money on youtube i started making money on youtube like when i had like 2,000 subscribers so it's very possible to make money on youtube with a smaller audience with a smaller channel i already made a video about this last week so click the video over here i think it's gonna be but i'll also leave the video down in the description bar i dropped so many gems in that video on how to make money on youtube so definitely check it out if you haven't checked it out already the next side hustle is going to be 
for my ladies specifically because this is something that I relied on heavily before when I was trying to make money on the side where I had extra time to make extra money. In this whole category, I'm putting all beauty related items in this one category. So we're gonna say freelance makeup artist, an eyelash technician, hairdresser, if you know how to do really bomb blowouts or even braids, box braids, wigs, nail tech, whatever you know how to do beauty related, I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend that you tap into that because the beauty industry is something that is recession proof. You are always gonna find people who want to look good because they feel that when they look good, they feel good. It's just one of those industries that people will invest in, they'll constantly be spending on. Have you ever met that one friend who's like constantly broke but somehow still has money for new weave, new extensions, new lashes, like their nails are always done but they're always complaining about how broke they are. This is because people take pride in how they look whether their bank account reflects that or not. So people are always spending money on a makeup artist, a hairdresser, a nail tech, eyelash technician, someone to ombre their brows, whatever the case may be. That is one side hustle that I didn't realize how much money I would be bringing in with doing people's makeup. In college, I used to wear makeup every single day, sis. I'm talking every single day. Today, this is not the case. I don't have time to beat my face every single day, but in college, girl, yes, honey, <laughs> the eyebrows were beat to the gods every single day. Contour, highlights, lashes, every single day. People started noticing, oh, I really like your makeup. My aunts would ask me to do their makeup and they lived all the way in Toronto. They would drive 30, 40 minutes to the suburbs for me to do their makeup just so they could go back to Toronto. And that's when I realized like damn I think I really do have a skill that I should start charging for my friends when they were going out They would ask me to come over and do their makeup and of course me just being excited to like do makeup because I really enjoyed it Yes, of course sure sis. I'm coming over. I'm gonna help you with your makeup I would just do my friends and family's makeup just for the fun of it I realized I could turn this into an income because I noticed that people were charging a whole lot of money I was charging $70 per face to do makeup But then if I had to come to you, I would charge $25 travel fee to like travel within Toronto it would never cost me $25 that was additional money in my pocket and most of the time I would get more than one person to do their makeup at the same time because it would be a group whether it's a birthday if you get a bridal party you are laughing to the bank sis that's like five six people minimum because you have like bridesmaids the bride the mom it got to a point where I actually needed to ask one of the girls that I work with to come on board and help me to beat all these faces I would do the brows and the foundation and then she would do the eye makeup and she was amped to come with me I was making really good money basically and then also I added the service to do hair too because I noticed that a lot of girls that were booking me had like hair that resembled my weave and it was pretty easy to style I would just take my little flat iron or whatever curl it up curl it up it take me like 15 minutes I would add that to the service so I'd say hair and makeup a hundred dollars girl when I tell you I was getting booked left right and center I definitely 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 recommend if you know how to do something very well in the beauty industry set up advertisements you can use Kijiji Craigslist definitely use Facebook and Instagram when I'm looking for a new hairdresser or something and nobody in my circle knows a good person I definitely go straight to Instagram so 100% set up an Instagram page use the hashtags that are specific to your city your area if I'm looking for a lash technician I'm not just searching up hashtag lash technician because it's gonna give me everyone in the whole goddamn world <laughs> and I'm not looking for everyone in the world I'm looking for someone in Toronto if you live like in Dallas perhaps put Dallas lash technician Dallas makeup artist customize the hashtags to be in your city you'll slowly start to get inquiries you'll start to get DMS for you know pricing and are you available and stuff like that set up promotion you could say it's $75 per person, but if you have three or more people, then the price becomes $65. I remember I was doing promotion of hair and makeup for $100 per person, and it would take me like an hour, an hour, 20 minutes to do that. It really didn't cost me a lot of money, plus I didn't have to pay anybody else. I didn't work in anybody's shop to post on Instagram is free. To post on Kijiji and Craigslist is free. To post onto Facebook is free. To post onto Model Mayhem is free. That's another one you can use as well. When I was doing it, I know that people were on Model Mayhem looking for makeup artists for their photo shoots and stuff like that. Also, I understand that not everyone is really great with makeup or hair, but like if you can learn one of these things. In Toronto here, lashes cost anywhere from $150 to $500 for good eyelash extensions. If you can do even three people in a day and let's say you're charging two hundred dollars per person to do their lashes um hello you're making six hundred dollars in one day some people don't even make that in a week definitely consider 
picking up a skill, learning how to do something. I see memes on like Instagram, oh, every girl's a lash tech now. Hello, because lash techs get paid, honey. Don't focus on what anybody else has to say when it comes to you making your money. What other people think about you and your profession is none of your concern. As long as you are good with what you do and you are happy doing what you do, that's all that matters. So if you have to pick up a skill in order to learn how to do these things, then go ahead and do that. Another side hustle that some people might overlook this and not really consider this a side hustle, but to me, it's 100% a side hustle, and that is bartending or waitressing or bottle service. I would definitely consider this a side hustle just because the amount of money that you make is directly affected to how good you are at your job. The more customers you have, the more money you're making, and the better you are at the job, the higher your tips will be. It's a side hustle that I really enjoy. I love, love, love that industry so much. If you're naturally an interactive being, then 100% I would recommend going into bartending or serving or something like that. The amount of money that you can make in that industry, people often underestimate. I was making on average $200, but then you're also getting minimum wage for server hourly on a good night I could make like five bills where I had like parties it was a busy type of day like you can make great money in waitressing however you need to be strategic about choosing the bar or restaurant or club that you work at or else you're gonna go into it with high expectations and Sally you are going to be underwhelmed you are going to be disappointed and you're, you're gonna look at me like hello my good sis Linda Lord told me to come and do this and I was just let down I'm not trying to let you down girl so let me give you the tips and tricks and give you all that you need to succeed as we proceed <laughs> okay <laughs> number one choose a restaurant that is always busy think about the hot spot in your city think about where you want to go on a Friday night and whether or not they would probably have a lineup. If they would probably have a lineup, you probably wanna work there because that means that it's always busy. People are coming in and leaving, coming in and leaving. You know, like the restaurant is always bumping. It's a hot spot. You wanna work at the hot spot, okay? Next, you wanna think of somewhere that the menu is not actually low budget. I'm just being honest. Are you doing this because you're trying to make tips money or are you doing it because you're bored with your life? Both, okay, it's okay. A higher menu suggests two things. Number one, as long as you're doing your job correctly, of course, if they're tipping by percentage and their bill is higher, then you're probably gonna get a higher tip. That's just two plus two is four. <laughs> it's just quick maps. Also, a higher menu price point suggests a higher, more mature, more established clientele. Just be strategic about where you choose to work at. And if you're doing this with, I want to make a certain amount of money as a side hustle, I wanna be successful in this. I would definitely recommend trying to apply for restaurants that you like, you actually like the vibe, you would want to dine there if you got the opportunity. Working at a good restaurant, number one, you're probably gonna feel like you're not even working. It's gonna be so much fun because you're gonna meet so many people, customers every day, and then also the people that you work with are typically like as fun as you. And then you're gonna make tips right away. By attending waitressing and bottle service, those are industries you don't need any experience for. You can go in and get hired on the spot and start working by like two days later, especially when it's busy seasons. Rooftops, patios, they're open in the summertime and it's super busy. Restaurants are really busy around the holidays as well. Just go into a hot restaurant and apply, girl. I'm telling you, this is an amazing side hustle. Some people look over it completely because they feel like, oh, it's another job. I don't wanna work for somebody. Girl, <laughs> if you consider it to be your business, if you're like, well, I'm going in and each customer that I serve is a customer of mine, not necessarily a customer of the whole restaurant, but like you're a personal customer and you wanna make sure to it that they have a great experience. I promise you that's gonna reflect in your tips. Bottle service is a little bit different though, depending on where you do the bottle service, because if you're in a nightclub, it's a little bit difficult to, you know, interact with them, but there's still an art to it, trust me. You can still interact with people if you are doing bottle service. They came here to party. They came here to have a great time. I can go on and on about bartending, waitressing, and bottle service, because that's just an industry that's just so much fun. So yeah, try applying for a waitressing, bartending, or bottle service position. The next side hustle is something that I haven't actually done, but I'm definitely 100% interested in, and that is Airbnb. Girl, do you know how much coins people are making on Airbnb? It's crazy. If you have a home already, I would caution you around renting out your own personal home if you have valuables in there. But if you feel like you are comfortable renting out your space, people on Airbnb are making coins. I know quite a few people who rent out their Airbnb for a profit. They consider it to be like a second job. For a metropolitan city like Toronto, an average one bedroom, one bathroom costs about $2,300 a month. If you put your place
place up for let's say $250 a night plus a $60 cleaning fee. That is $310 for you if you put it up for just four nights out of the whole month, you've already made half of your rent. If you have someone in your building, in your apartment, your condo, in the area that you feel comfortable going to stay at their place for the night so that you can put your place on Airbnb, that's definitely an option. Or what you can do, get another lease with somebody else, go have some the lease, and then both of you guys manage putting that property on Airbnb 24 seven. So you don't even really have to consider whether or not you're gonna be home that weekend or whether or not you need your place that night. I would definitely consider putting your place up on Airbnb as another side hustle. Your earnings can range vastly. You can make anywhere from like $200 a month to $10,000 a month, depending on the property that you have and how often you put it up on Airbnb. If your space is available, if you would like to do that, you definitely have the option of putting your place up on Airbnb as a side hustle. All you've got to do is keep your place stocked with towels and have it clean for the guests to arrive. And you could be making bank on Airbnb. Definitely look it up if you don't believe me, girl. The next side hustle, anything that you know how to do on a computer that is creative you can definitely sell your services as a graphic designer a video editor Photoshop professional you can use sites like Upwork and Fiverr to advertise what it is that you know how to do if you know how to do those cartoon images of people's pictures do that whatever you know how to do on the internet there's somebody out there that doesn't know how to do it or someone who doesn't want to do it set up an instagram account use your hashtags people will reach out to you to work together if you know how to design websites people pay from 300 to three thousand dollars just for a website and that's something that i know people can do in like a day imagine making three thousand dollars a day as a side hustle what people pay money for things that they don't know how to do or don't want to do or you can reach out to people and say like hey i saw that you were complaining in your last video about editing i'm a really great editor maybe we could work together or oh i saw on your instagram stories you were talking about how difficult it was for you to start a website i could set something up for you for this amount or maybe i could work with the next side hustle is to write essays and resumes if you're really good at putting together reports essays or even resumes there's definitely a need for this people don't know how to put together their essays, their reports, their resumes. Here in Canada, there's something called EduBirdie where you can sign up and you can offer to write people's essays. People leave reviews about how your essay did for them and things like that. If you're really great with writing and putting bodies and paragraphs together, I hate writing, honestly. I hate English. English was my worst subject. I hated it so much. And if I knew about this in high school and college and university, I probably, mm -mm. I'm not saying that I would have used it. I'm not saying that I wouldn't have either. Okay, okay. Basically, you can go on those websites and put up a profile, bodies of your work, examples. People reach out to you to write essays for them. It's as simple as that. People pay anywhere from $100 to $1,000 for essays, reports, depending on how important it is and how much time it takes you to write this. There are many sites out there that you can use in order to write essays for people, write resumes for people. You can even use actually Fiverr and Upwork as well to write essays for people. That's another side hustle opportunity. Another side hustle that you can use is to be an online tutor. If you are really good at school, then 100% you would definitely flourish in this um, side hustle. But if you don't really like school that much, it's okay. There's still someone out there that you are more academically advanced than. You can teach kindergarten. You know your one plus ones. You know your two plus twos. <laughs> you know your ABCs. So you can teach anywhere from kindergarten to grade 12 online. There are options, of course, for you to teach college students and university students, of course. But from kindergarten to grade 12, I believe all you need is a high school diploma to tutor online. So that's definitely an industry that you can make money in. You can make anywhere from $12 an hour to $25 an hour tutoring online. Definitely look into that. As long as you have a high school diploma, you can teach grade school. Another side hustle that you can start really quickly is teaching English as a second language. So teaching ESL is basically being an English tutor. It's kind of similar to the side hustle that I just mentioned, which is online tutoring, but this is specifically English. So as long as you speak English fluently, you can teach English to anywhere in the world. This is not one that I've done personally. I looked it up and someone reported their earnings on a website called QKid. They were working 24 hours a week and they were making $600. So that actually works out to $25 an hour. So they were making really good money. I would say $25 an hour to 
teach English online is pretty great because you can literally work from anywhere in the world. As long as you have a computer, you're good. Another side hustle that you can go into is to drive for Uber or Lyft. Now this is one that your tips will vary and it also depends on where you're driving to as well. When I looked it up online, they said that the average Uber driver after tips, commissions, and sales tax, they take home approximately $25 an hour. Uber and Lyft, they're really easy ride share programs to get into. Not only that, if you want your funds right away, Lyft does that. Uber pays weekly. I'm not sure if you can request it right away. Those are two that, you know, if you need money right now, girl or boy, honey, look into driving for Uber or Lyft. Similar to Uber and Lyft is Uber Eats and DoorDash. Those are food delivery services. Apparently you can make anywhere from five to seven dollars. If there are promos going on then you can make even more money and you can make nine to eleven dollars per delivery plus tips of course. That's pretty decent money but like Uber and Lyft it's best to do these things when there is a surge and when there are promos going on around rush hour, on holidays, or when the weather isn't necessarily the prettiest. Those are when the surge is high and you make more money per ride. So you can be very strategic about the times that you decide to do Uber, Uber Eats, Lyft, DoorDash, skip the dishes, things like that. The next side hustle is one that can make you so, so much money and that is photography. Oh my God, there's so much money in photography you have no idea. Especially, especially, especially in wedding photography. When my sister was getting married, I had to inquire about the prices of wedding photographers. Wow, I had no idea how much money people spend on wedding photography. If you are willing to even go $1,200 for a whole day of filming, you are going to be making bank because that is like so 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 cheap for wedding photography wedding photos cost like five thousand dollars it's crazy if you are good with photography you know how to take really nice pictures set up an instagram profile and you can definitely get yourself some business if you set up some promos you send out some advertisements you can put some up on kijiji craigslist again different wedding blogs and wedding sites and just by word of mouth of course get you some cards made at Vista print you can get yourself 500 business cards made at Vista print for ten dollars tell your friends and families word of mouth honestly the cap is endless how much money you can make in photography especially if you're doing wedding photography the same thing goes for videography if you're really great with videography you can do that as well people just want the memories and they want it to be captured but of course they don't want their friends and families focused on taking pictures the whole time so they need someone who's not related to them to come in and take the pictures if you charge twelve hundred dollars for a whole day of filming which you might think is wow so expensive like how can i get paid twelve hundred dollars just to take pictures well <laughs> there are people who are willing <laughs> willing to pay that much because every other quote that they got is like $5,000. If you are great with photography and videography, definitely set up as a photographer as a side hustle. When the cash starts rolling in, you could thank me later by sending me a little percentage. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> The next side hustle is if you are good at cooking, you could definitely sell your plates of food. You can do meal prep. I know of someone who actually does meal prep. They started off by literally just sending off blasts on Facebook. Hey, meet me at the plaza on this and this intersection. She would literally sell little styrofoam plates of her food to people. Of course, the ingredients are pretty cheap. They're pretty low cost when you're doing it in bulk. Her food was so, so, so good. She would sell it for $10 a plate and she didn't have to pay for any overhead because it was her who was cooking it she literally had like no other cost other than the ingredients that went into the food and when you're doing it in bulk like that it's so much less like each plate did not cost her ten dollars maybe each plate was probably like a dollar or something and then she had her packaging as well was probably like 10 cents per packaging those little styrofoam plates but the food was so good people would line up she would sell out every single weekend she would do this once a weekend so once again as of right now instagram is the marketing place set up your instagram account and use your hashtags add people in your city just send off black you can definitely get your business up and running today. Print out your business cards from Vistaprint. Vistaprint doesn't take too long to get sent over to you and they have many templates for you that make it very easy to design your business card and just have it sent over to you. Also, what's even cheaper and quicker than Vistaprint is setting up an Instagram account which is free and using your hashtags efficiently and adding people who live in your city for awareness. Anyone who follows or who has posted in a certain hashtag, you could search Toronto Foodie and then just start adding people. If you want to, you could search Toronto bachelor because i promise you they probably not eating sis i promise you <laughs>
I'm just throwing shade. I'm sorry, bachelors. I'm sorry, Toronto bachelors. The last and final one is to become a task rabbit. It sounds illegal, but it's not, I promise you. Task rabbit is a platform that allows you to sign up as a helper to help around the house to do minuscule miscellaneous tasks, such as organizing, cleaning up a closet, cleaning out a storage room, vacuuming, yard work. There's so many tasks. You can sign up to work on there and that's another one that you can earn anywhere from minimum wage in your city all the way up to $45 an hour. It depends on what your credentials are and what you're available for, but honestly, it's an easy platform. You don't need any requirements to start working there. You also don't need much experience it's very quick and easy for you to get paid. So check out TaskRabbit as well in order to do minuscule miscellaneous tasks around people's homes. You put your availability, they hire you, you come out, you help them and you get paid. Bada bing, bada boom. So guys, that is it for all the side hustles. There are so many more side hustles. I didn't name all the side hustles that I don't trust me. There's so many more. Maybe I'll do a part two of this video. Maybe I'll do another version of this video. Let me know what you guys think. Sharing is caring. We're all a community here and we're all trying to secure that bag honey these were just to give you ideas and give you inspiration and motivation to start a side hustle business of your own whatever side hustle that you decide the whole premise is to think of things that you know how to do well if you're good at something beauty related sell that service if you're good at driving do that if you're good at designing do that whatever you know how to do or you do well there is someone out there who is willing to pay you to do it the average millionaire they say has seven streams of revenue that's just the average millionaire okay so that means there are millionaires out there who have way more than seven streams of revenue so we have got some catching up to do you feel me if you have more streams of revenue then you have less stress because if one is down or one isn't doing that great at least you have your other streams of revenue to fall back on so that was it for this video i'll see you guys in our next episode of good girls gone boss love you guys so much love you to the moon and back be true to you